Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. You know, reciprocal zenith angles show us that plumb lines are not parallel. Now you're probably thinking, okay, who cares? Well, I'll tell you why I care. I think this is one of the better ways that we can demonstrate that the earth cannot be flat. And I'm going to show you how that works in this video. Now, some people still claim that level and horizontal are the same thing. In other words, the earth is flat. They've become less willing to call themselves flat earthers. They know what that makes them sound like. So they'll say silly things like, well, of course the earth's not flat. It has hills and valleys and things. Still, if you say level and horizontal are the same, you are by default claiming the earth is flat. They even claim they have a geometric proof for this ridiculous idea. Now, I got news for you. You're not going to read a dictionary or study Euclid's elements and figure out the shape of the Earth from it. You've got to make some measurements. The problem is they never produce any actual evidence to back up their claim. So first they'll say all horizontals are parallel to the plane of the horizon. In other words, that plane of the horizon is parallel to that plane of the horizon. They're literally telling you that the plane of the horizon, in other words, a horizontal at the coast of England is parallel to the plane of the horizon or a horizontal in San Diego. That is absolutely preposterous. They are not parallel. Now here's reality. Zeniths are in line with the gravity vector. And when I say zenith, I simply mean a point directly above you. Horizontal at any point is tangent to some elevation. And it is perpendicular to a zenith at that point. So horizontals can never be parallel. The only way that could work is horizontals which are perpendicular to great circles. For instance, a line of longitude or the equator. Can we show that? Absolutely. Jesse Kozlowski and Soundly showed that at Lake Pontchartrain. And Jesse and Larry Scott have shown how zeniths diverge. We'll be looking at that too in a minute. But first, let's talk about Lake Pontchartrain. This is the GPS data taken from Lake Pontchartrain at the north end of the causeway, at the south end of the causeway, and in the center. Distances are GPS distances from the origin of the ECEF coordinate system that GPS uses. Notice that the horizontal from the north end to the center and the horizontal from the center to the south end are anything but parallel with each other. And the more points we put in, the more horizontals we can produce. Horizontal is specific to one point only. And each horizontal, of course, would have its own zenith. So that's the first wrong claim. But that leads to wrong claim number two, which is all verticals are perpendicular to the plane of the horizon. And therefore, all verticals are parallel. Nope, that is not true either. In reality, each horizontal has its own zenith. Under no circumstance can any two zeniths ever be parallel. And measuring reciprocal zenith angles can show this. Well, what is a zenith angle? And I'll read you a definition of it. Vertical angle, also known as zenith angle, is the angle measured from directly above the zenith so perfectly horizontal will have a vertical angle of 90 degrees, like you see there. If you're looking to a somewhat higher elevation, the vertical angle will be less than 90 degrees. And if you're looking further down, it will be greater than 90 degrees. So let's look at this interesting little diagram. If the zeniths were parallel, there's one, there's another zenith parallel to it. If we cut those two zeniths with a line like that, these two angles have to equal 180 degrees. We can prove that with Euclidean geometry, no problem. And it doesn't matter what line we cut those two zeniths with, 
the sum of the two angles still always has to be 180 degrees. What happens for diverging zeniths? There's two zeniths that are not parallel with each other. Let's cut them with a line. And now the sum of those two angles has to be greater than 180 degrees. And again, it doesn't matter the orientation of that line. The sum of the two angles is always greater than 180 degrees if the zeniths are diverging as we're showing here. Well, can we measure this? Absolutely we can. We only need to know two things. We need to know two fixed points that we can see and identify. And we need a way to measure those angles. We can make that measurement with a theodolite. Now, a theodolite is a precision instrument for measuring vertical and horizontal angles. And professional theodolites make those measurements to a very high level of accuracy. And regardless whether it's an old one, like this Wild T3, or a more modern theodolite, like the Tremble S7 you see there, both are referenced to gravity. So the theodolite's vertical reference is the gravity vector. That is your zenith. So how do we do this? Well, it's pretty simple. We put one theodolite at one position, a second theodolite at another position, and we simply point the two theodolites at each other and measure those two angles. That's all there is to it. Now these measurements have been made untold thousands of times, but I'm gonna talk about just a few specific ones. In 2018, Jesse Kozlowski and Larry Scott got together and measured reciprocal zenith angles between the Hagerstown, Maryland Airport and High Rock Lookout, which is about 11 miles away. Larry had his T3 theodolite at the Hagerstown Airport about where the Red X is. There's a little closer view. While Jesse was located at High Rock Lookout, now there's an interesting picture I found of High Rock Lookout from 1909. And in those days, they had an observation deck built up there. The observation platform is gone. And there's a lot of graffiti on the rock, but it's still there. And there's a picture of Larry's tripod at the airport. And you notice the bright reflection. That is a signal mirror that Larry was using to make his position more visible to Jesse. As you can imagine, the airport environment is kind of cluttered. There are a lot of buildings and structures and things around. So it would be hard for Jesse to pick Larry out from 11 miles away. But with the mirror, Jesse could clearly identify Larry's position. Jesse, on the other hand, was standing up on top of that rock about where the red arrow is pointing. Now that picture is actually made through Larry's theodolite. From a closer distance, he was only about four miles away when he made that image. So what Larry was actually able to see from the airport would have been a little more than a third the size of the rock that you see in that photograph, but still quite visible. And Larry didn't have any trouble picking out Jesse's bright yellow tripod up there. Let's go to this elevation diagram that I pulled off Google Earth. Larry would be the red dot on the left and Jesse would be the red dot over on the right. And I've drawn a line between the two points. So Larry was measuring angle A and Jesse was measuring angle B. The slope distance between the two points is a bit over 58,000 feet. The elevation difference is a bit over 1,100 feet. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can easily find the base of that triangle. Now let's use a little bit of trigonometry. And when we do, we can calculate angle A to be 88 degrees, 54 minutes, and 17.3 seconds. Angle B would be 91 degrees, 5 minutes, and 42.7 seconds. And the total would be 180 degrees, 0 minutes, 0 seconds. This goes along with what we were talking about previously. If those verticals are parallel with each other, these are the angles that we have to measure. 
But that's not what happened. These are the actual measurements. Larry measured an angle of 88 degrees, 57 minutes, 58.2 seconds. That's almost four minutes of arc greater than trigonometry tells us it would have to be if the verticals were parallel with each other. Jesse, on the other hand, measured angle B at 91 degrees, 9 minutes, 55 seconds. Again, about four arc minutes greater than it would have to be if the verticals were parallel. The total is 180 degrees, 7 minutes, and 53.2 seconds. The zeniths are diverging by 7 minutes, 53.2 seconds. Here's more detail from Larry, and I won't go through all of this. I'll leave it on the screen long enough that you can pause the video if you wish and study all those numbers, but Larry has given you latitude, longitude, ECEF coordinates, everything you need. So let's go back to our elevation drawing, and we'll see clearly that the zeniths are not parallel. And again, that measured divergence was 7 minutes, 53.2 seconds. Now you'll also notice there are a couple of green dots appearing. This measured divergence from Larry and Jesse does not include the effects of refraction. And we're always looking through the atmosphere and we always have some refraction. And refraction always makes objects in the distance appear higher than they really are. Not by a lot, but by some amount. That's what the green dots are simulating. Larry, down there on the left at the red dot, was looking at Jesse, but he was seeing Jesse up there where the green dot is. He was seeing Jesse in a higher position than Jesse actually is. And that made Larry's angle A smaller than it really is in reality. The same thing was happening to Jesse. Jesse was looking down at Larry. He's now the green dot on the left side. And again, the effect of refraction is to decrease the angular measurement that Jesse's making. So when we take refraction into account, that will add another 40 or 50 arc seconds to the angle that both Jesse and Larry measured. And the result will be uh, a true divergence of something in excess of nine minutes. And in surveying terms, that actually is huge. Now I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say that's just a one-off thing. This is, uh, this is Jesse and Larry and they're just messing around. How about this one? How about a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration survey from June of 1978? This is a survey of the McDonnell Observatory radio line scheme. And you see all the various points in that little diagram on the right. Let me show you what that data showed. Now the sum of the reciprocal zenith angle observations are made of the outward angular inclination of the plumb lines at each end of these very long lines radiating in all directions. And I've shown that diagram again on the lower left side. Let's look at this column. These are reciprocal zenith measurements and they are in pairs. So the top line is measuring the angle from position one, which is right there, to position seven, which is right there. And the next line is from seven back to one. This column shows the sum of the zenith angles. Notice they all are in excess of 180 degrees. And the next column shows the plumb line tilt. The smallest we see is 15 minutes, 53 seconds. And we see another one at 44 minutes, 33 seconds, about halfway down the page. Notice these slope distances. They range from 32 kilometers up to 92 kilometers. So what can we conclude from this? 
Well, horizontals are not parallel. Plumb lines are not parallel. And level is definitely not horizontal. Now, before I leave you, I got one more thing. The auto level crosshair in this picture is at about 10 feet above mean sea level. Anybody want to take a guess at why it is at the top of a 100 foot building that's 13 miles away? That's right. Gotta be Earth Curve. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget the like and subscribe button down there. There's a link to the Patreon and the PayPal. Thanks for all the stuff you guys do for me. And I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.